Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. My name is Colm, and if you saw any of my previous videos on the Laugo Alien, you will know that I pretty much immediately fell in love with this thing. It is a magnificent pistol to shoot, and I would love to use it as my standard competition pistol for things up to and including like desert brutality and finish brutality. However, that means it has to meet a certain level of adverse condition reliability. Um, which I haven't seen anyone else do any sort of testing on. So I'm going to do it because if the gun can't handle some of these tests we're going to do, well, then I'm not going to be using it as a competition pistol. But if it can, and it can give me the confidence in its reliability, then fantastic, we're going to be good to go. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start with a mud test. I'll fire a few rounds through the gun just to show you that it works, which obviously it does. I'm going to go ahead and plug the muzzle with a little squishy earplug, because I don't need to get mud in the muzzle. That could actually be dangerous. Um, and I have swapped the top strap out for the iron sight top strap, because I am not interested in mud testing the red dot optic. Now, if we look at this, there are some gaps in between the slide and the top strap here that could, like there's a very real potential for crap to get down in there. and. I'm not really sure exactly what the consequence of that is. We have a hammer mechanism up here. Um, who knows? But um, I will say, full disclosure, Laugo gave me this pistol, which to my mind actually means there is less conflict of interest. I think most people who actually buy these for their immense retail price are going to be very reticent to do things like dump them in scratchy, slimy mud. So uh, let's do a couple rounds here. Show you that the gun's running properly. Check that thing, that is in fact empty. There we go. And I have a 16 round magazine. So we'll load that in there. We'll set this down and let's go get some mud. Kind of feel like I'm panning for gold here. So, chamber is empty. Let's just confirm that. Magazine's loaded. Chamber is empty. We'll leave the magazine in, so it's gonna go in the mud, rack it, and, uh, well, in the mud, out of the mud, pull the plug, muscle obstructions can be weird, and then rack it and start shooting. You ready? Like I said, I don't think anyone else is really out there interested in doing this sort of thing. Either. Very nice. Lago Alien. My apologies, Jan, for doing this to your gorgeous pistol. Don't want to get mud down in the barrel. Bloop. There we go, you ready? That's not promising. So I am not getting the slide far enough back to chamber around. Still not getting it quite. All right, we may have gone a little overboard on the very beginning. Do you want to keep this? Let's get it again. <laughs> okay, 
that may be the answer for this. Oh man, this feels scratchy. I wonder if it got gunked into the uh, the gas chamber. No, it can't be. It can't be gunked into the gas. Well, I don't see how it could have really gotten in there deep, but I think we might be. Okay, it now has a round chamber. Do you ready? Woohoo! <laughs> we now have an empty chamber. That did not go as well as I was hoping. However, once I was able to get enough of the crap out, to get the slide all the way back, then it ran. So let's try it again. Wash off my earplug here. <laughs> the earplug is now full of water and will not squish. I did not know that squishy earplugs absorb water. Learn something every day. There we go. All right. So let's. If we were to do something that is slightly less severe. Plop into the side of the mud. It's locked open on an empty magazine. Slides all the way in battery. So that's one of the good things about this gun is there is the barrel is fixed so one of the common things that causes problems on browning tilting barrel guns with this sort of abuse is you get a little bit of gunk locked in such that the barrel can't move properly into position and that'll jam it up because this is a fixed barrel we don't have that problem um safe it again so chamber's empty Our issues were all here at the back. Well, I think, actually they may not have been. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> I had a rock between the trigger and the frame. <laughs> oh, and I also only had one round left in that mag, so it's, Locked open empty again. And I didn't bring the third magazine over. Excuse me, oh, one oh, moment. Oh, oh. Do you have the third mag? Oh, oh. cameraman's boat. Dun, dun, dun. My glasses are now covered in mud. The Laugo is now covered in mud and smoking, which is pretty cool. Uh, it took me a little bit of time to be able to get the thing to actually cycle all the way backwards. I am, however, so it's not a perfect result, but I'm honestly pretty darn impressed that with this much crap on it, it's still running. And I'm able to let it lock open. Um, part of this may be the breech face is significantly lower down in the gun than we would have with a typical Browning style pistol. Uh, you know, going back to the whole low bore access thing of the alien. 
Um, and what that means is that it's kind of out of the way of little bits of mud falling off the top of the slide or the ejection port. Again, something that causes problems in typical pistols. So, like, normally that's exactly where we'd have problems. There'd be some little bit of dirt on the breech face or on the barrel locking lugs that would cause a problem. The trigger's still working. Um, that thing looks awful, but I think, I, I call that a, not quite 100%, but I call that about a 90% success. And you know what? I, w I think I would be perfectly confident taking this into a muddy environment. This is far worse than this gun's ever going to get uh, with the protection of a holster in competition. Or even the occasional, like, I'm crawling with it and pfft, down it goes into a, a mud puddle. I think we're definitely uh, closer to Toyota Hilux levels of reliability here than we are the sort of Maserati Italian finicky supercar that a lot of people assume this gun must be. And I'll be honest, I came into this really not knowing if it was going to be Italian supercar in the garage all the time or Hilux that you can't stop. So this is the first of several tests. I've got a couple more things uh, in mind for it, but I will chalk that one up as pretty darn successful so far. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.